and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today we are continuing on with my propagation series, an installment of that for propagating succulents. And in a prior video I had showed you um, how to prune off existing plants to, to, the, to then have cuttings and, and, the, and the fact that you need to have the cuttings harden off, it's called harden off, for at least a week if not longer until that tip is nice and, and firm uh, so that when you go to root the plant it doesn't just rot all the way up the stem but instead it actually roots there and grows and becomes a new plant for you. So we're gonna do that with some of these. This is a Crassula here. We've got the little bit of piece of the pickle plant, another, another succulent here, some other Crassula. So uh, these have, as mentioned, have been hardened off on the end. So you can see, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you, after you've let it sit for a while. This one's actually been sitting for a good 10 days. So you can see the brown on the end there. You can also, when you feel it, it'll feel rough to the touch. It will no longer be squishy at all. You can also do it with just leaves, just leaves. And these right here, the points on there, nice and, nice and rough, nice and hard. Brown, they usually brown too. Uh, same with this guy on the, this end here. Nice and brown. It'll be browned off. It won't be green anymore at all. This one did it on the on the end, so it doesn't really have much of a stem, but you can do that still too. This one as well, you'll see there. Now this one did brown up, did harden off, but you can see the plant is a little squishy looking. It's not really going to be a good choice here. Uh, it's wilted, so this I I'm not going to bother trying to propagate. It just doesn't have enough uh, liquid and moisture inside of it in order to do well. So you get rid of that one. The rest of them look good. So now this is my rooting medium, my propagation medium, and I have another video where I show you how to make this. It's one part washed horticultural sand. Very important that you use horticultural sand. Do not go to the beach. That is high in salts. Better not to go to a playground. Uh, you don't know what's been going on in that sand. Uh, so it's much more sanitary to get horticultural sand and then wash it just to get some dust off of it. One part vermiculite, one part perlite, and one part peat moss or coconut core. So that is the mix. All right, now it is also slightly moistened, this mix here and it's moist but not soggy and then what you want to do is you want to take a rooting hormone like this one and you're we're going to dust i have some in here because i don't want to be sticking this in there in case it gets wet so take a little bit out and use it that way it's better to do that so you don't compromise the interior of the rooting hormone jar okay so here we go, so we're gonna take a tad here. So this is a rooting hormone, it will stimulate root growth. I'm gonna brush it with this, this little paintbrush here. The paintbrushes work really well. You don't really wanna to touch this, it's not something you wanna to touch and you don't wanna inhale it. So that's why it's, it is best uh, to simply brush it on with something. Now, uh, you could use a, 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 a wooden stick of some sort, a dowel or something, or I'm going to use, since I forgot to bring that, the end of this to make a little hole. And then, now if there were any other ridges along this here, you see the ridge here I got some of the hormone on. If there were any others, I would also put the hormone on them because those are where root nodes, where roots are going to come out, but there's just the one. So I am going to stick it in and then firm it up a little bit around it the good news is this is slightly moist and it also has sand the sand helps to hold the plant up if you need to if it's a taller one 
then you could use toothpicks to hold it up and, and keep it in place because you don't want it to start rooting and then fall over and then the roots get dried out. Generally, you want to go for an inch to two inch long cuttings. That The bigger the cutting, the less it's harder to get it to root, but it's not impossible. So this one, as you can see, it's about two inches. Same thing I'm going to do on the bottom here with the rooting hormone. Get it on there nice. Okay, and then same thing, gonna make a hole. We're gonna, we're gonna space these out about an inch to two inches apart. Put that in, firm it up. You don't wanna go down way, way far, but you can go in a bit with it. What you're trying to prevent though is the, the other parts rotting before it starts to root. So if you feel like that may be happening, you can always pull it up a bit. And I'm just actually gonna pull this one up just a bit. So just the, the, the part that is calloused over and has a rooting hormone in it for the most part is in, in the rooting mix. Okay, so another one here, gonna do the same thing. Now you wanna do extras from what you would like. I mean, just to have extras so that you can be sure you're gonna get, some of them may not take. We're gonna check in on these later when they do, when they have started, uh, when they've rooted and also when they have started, you'll know that it's time to take them out when they create little baby leaves that are gonna be growing near them or next to them. That will be indica an indication that they have roots and that they are ready to grow. And a lot of times the, the, this is the mother plant will no longer really be viable and you'll be planting the new leaves. Okay, same thing here, this one. Sometimes they curve when you're drying them, if you can, it depends, uh, succulents tend to do that, but when you're drying them, if you can kind of get them to stand up a little straight, that helps. Now, something you can do with this one, since it is so curved instead, because it's gonna be hard for me to stick this in, in like this, without having the leaves themselves on the soil. So you can see all the little root nodes here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a bunch of rooting hormone on those, and I'm gonna do it, gonna put it in sideways. So I'm gonna create a little trowel trough here for it and stick it in sideways, push it in. And now it's gonna grow roots along, all along that stem there, instead of just trying to put it in that way. And then it's gonna stay up better that way too. Okay, so we've got this one, another biggish one here, but this one stands up pretty straight, so. Go ahead and put this in. Put this one in this on the side here, not too deep. Okay. Then we've got these two here. Dusting them. Make some holes here. I'm gonna do these in the middle. And it actually kind of makes a cool little succulent garden while they're rooting as well. Okay, and then we have this little pickle plant, another one, it's the same sort of thing with the end there that was taken off came off, do that, and put it in here, not very deep. Great. Okay, so now you can see we have this planted up very nicely. Tip it up slowly for you so nothing goes flying here. You can get a good look there. So we're gonna keep this in a bright area, bright light. This is already moist. We're not gonna be doing a lot of watering. It, when, it's, when, the, when, the rooting horm, when the rooting mix, 
the propagation mix starts to dry out some what you want to do is you want to mist so for succulents this doesn't apply to other plants we'll be doing some more we'll be doing some more propagating with other plants but for succulents you want to do a fine mist just mist them just mist the plants and around the plants and the and the mist will fall down and, and mist enough because you definitely don't want to keep this really really moist or get this really moist um, because that will cause rot Be succulents don't grow on the dry side as it is so when you're pro it's a, it's a, it's you have to walk a fine line when you're propagating the succulents uh the sink treating them the same as you would generally uh while just a little bit more moisture for those baby roots to start to come out so that they can continue to grow so that is all you need to do as i said we will check in again and then i'll be showing you uh the little when it, and it can take a while it can take several weeks it depends on time of year right now we're in the middle of spring can go a little faster than other times of the year but i'll be showing you when the which ones made it and then and and the little leaves that come up next to them and that sort of thing so um so we will uh, be checking in and that point we will go from there in terms of how to get them out of out of there and pot it up into their own into their own uh, container and this is a propagation mix it's not a it's not a succulent growing mix that's a different so be you'll be switching into a different mix when to for growing them so there you have it for oops see <laughs> That one, so I didn't have them in very deep, so that one did fall. So I'm not going to pick it up anymore. But, and like I said, if you have problems with some of them being a little unwieldy, uh, I just may do that with these two guys because they're pretty much just sticking straight up. Um, a little toothpick next to them will not hurt and will actually help them to stay straight and stay in. So there you go for propagating succulents. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.